Smash that limiter! Hi, I will everyone. suck. Um, sorry we weren't able to stream during the week. I have been incredibly sick. He caught the plague. I caught the plague. No, I didn't really. I got, um, just motherfucker. Come on. There we go. Um, <laughs> so I caught the flu and I've been out of commission since pretty much Wednesday. And it's oh, the audio on this fucking microphone. I just noticed that it's like, it's dying. I'm having issues because there's an update with, um, uh, Logitech that I would just refuse to download because Logitech just breaks everything when it updates. So <clears throat> it's, it's causing some issues. Anyway, um, so I'm going to be coughing once today um, and I'll be sounding like I'm dying um, in the, the final stages of recovery of the flu. I'll definitely <laughs> have to make sure I remember to get a flu, uh, flu vaccine next 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 um next year next season next season yeah i um i hate it i hate it man i hate it like starting out a new job i'm like i'm maybe two months into the new job or something like that i can't Mm. remember um and i am sick and i'm like god damn it now that i have the anxiety imagine getting sick i know and then you get the anxiety do i have enough sick leave i don't know because here in australia we get annual and sick leave if you Mm -hmm. are a permanent worker so that is permanent part-time permanent full-time or salary worker um so basically what that means is you um lose a bit of your wage to go towards uh annual leave and then the company has to pay sick leave but you still got to work so many hours to accumulate it or something like that and then you get x amount of sick leave and annual leave a year you get four weeks of <coughs> you get four weeks of annual of leave, annual leave yeah. and two weeks of sick leave per year. Yeah, basically that's how it works. And then if you're me, where I just don't take days off, you accumulate those annual leaves, and then when you leave that company, the company has to pay out a shitload of money. Oh yeah, I've had that left, happen. Yeah, which is what happened to me in my last job when I left. Which yeah, uh, which uh, that all went like like that all that money. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, good, I though, remember. I think, I think when I my other the last job I had before this one, I think I had about three weeks worth of of leave saved up. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I so had, that was that was really nice. I had uh, how many weeks? What's six? Twelve. That was two hundred and eight. Um, it was a hundred and something hours. Right on. So um, it was yeah, basically like, it was like it was it was pretty much a, over a month's worth of annual leave. Um roughly. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so it was good. So you get one twelfth of your uh, of your income in just by leaving. Pretty much, yeah, it was good. Um I still don't have regrets of leaving that company at all. Um Oh no, like you wouldn't. Um it's just it's just it was just in a position that was beneficial to me. Like there was nothing really I mean, personal things aside, um, there was nothing wrong with the company. It was, it was nothing wrong. It's just I couldn't grow there. I couldn't see myself growing, and uh, and I wanted to grow. I wanted to expand my wings, and also wanted to go somewhere locally. So, much, much better, happier for it, and uh, yeah, now I'm enjoying my new job. It's good. But excellent. Today, um, like every good old hot topic um we're talking about um australian road laws now the reason why we're going about this is this is a automotive sort of um podcast sometimes we talk about automotive (laughs) when we talk about automotive stuff when it's like kind of relevant you know um we can't talk about things like that all the time because otherwise it just gets a little bit stagnant and those people that are automotive enthusiasts would probably appreciate as well because Knowing them, they surround themselves in cars and cars and cars. And sometimes they want to talk about other things as well. Like, I've been in a few automotive meets where, you know, we're talking about cars and the next minute it goes into a full fucking tirade. Who will win Superman and Goku? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I've had that happen. Uh, that which, argument which was in the test of time. I am sorry to say this, but um, I don't like the Goku versus Superman argument because it depends what 
law you go off of because Superman has so many different versions. Some are like more realistic and like Goku would be. And then some versions, it's like, this is just stupid. <laughs> like, it doesn't well, make any fucking sense. Superman doesn't make sense. He's a shit character. I'm sorry. He's just terrible. But anyway, um, back onto Australian road laws. So, it's actually really important for people um, in all countries to understand road laws um, because it, you don't want to be caught out by a copper who, um, who wants to uh, take your money. Because they do. <laughs> um, the that whole thing that they're there for people's safety. Is... Some individuals, yeah, but as a whole, no. They they are they are. What would you call them? What would you call the service of the police in their country? Um, they're not keepers of peace. Poorly managed. Poorly managed. They they certainly love to fucking. I call them revenue Cause... raisers. That's what they are. They're okay, re- revenue so... collectors. When you have a daily quota, or yeah. let's say, for example, you're highway patrol and you have a daily quota, yeah. right? And they do have one too, by the way. I know 100% yeah. sure. You can deny it to your fucking blue in your face, but I know you have a quota. Because yeah. <laughs> I know police officers. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't lie to me. <laughs> you can't lie um, to me. I know the truth. <laughs> but like, when you, when you have quotas... Yeah. Um... It does, and you know, you need to meet those quotas. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. you know, it could be it could be your job on the line. It's like, well, what's more important is what's more important, uh, making sure your family's fed or pulling over the I don't know the the person doing one kilometer over the speed limit. Yeah, um, I understand the reason why they do the quotas, and the reason why the quotas are there is because. Um, it's to it's to encourage um discourage disencourage complacency. So if you have a whole heap of officers out on the streets, it promotes people behaving because generally when you see the presence of a cop, they generally behave. Mm-hmm. Um, except for meth heads, they don't behave for anybody. But um, <laughs> so the, the idea of the crota, and this is yeah. the way it was explained to me, the idea of the crota. Even though they'll deny it officially, and it's not written down on anything, although it's on emails <laughs> and on text messages and on all sorts of fucking things. So it's like you can't deny it. There's written proof of it. Um, is So then that way it encourages police officers to be actually out there present looking to meet their quota, looking for fines, looking for people doing the wrong thing. Um, then that way there's more of them out on the road because they're not staying behind doing fuck all unless they get called out and um, increases police presence and therefore um, traffic offences and normal general crime goes down a little bit because there's too many cops running around. People are going to commit crimes when there's cops everywhere. So um, so that's the whole point of it. The downside, though, is it, it sets up this public perception that they are revenue collectors, that they're basically... They're looking for trouble, and they are. Sometimes... Like, I'm, I'm not joking. Like, you could be driving down the road in your completely stock car and you get pulled over by a cop for a random breathalyzer, right? Um, which they can legally do here. That You can be pulled over for no particular reason as long as they give you a random breath check. Um, that's perfect line. Or they could pull you over and want to do a light signaling test, make sure your lights are working and functioning correctly. Um, they can do that. They don't actually have to have a reason really to pull you over here. Um, they they kind of do, but they don't really. They just have to have some sort I, of suspicion. I um I was once pulled over. I think about a year ago, I was yeah. pulled over because my uh, left uh, headlight was out. Yeah, yeah. There was no fines or anything like that. It was just yeah. let me know that my head my headlight was out. And I thought, all right, I'll go you take do care get, of it today. Like, you do get because it is up to their discretion whether they do or not. And like you know, it depends on your attitude. Like, yeah, I say all this shit, but like if I get pulled up by a police officer, I'm gonna be respectful to them and whatnot because yeah, yeah, for sure. You being a victim is gonna yeah, it's not they, gonna help. It's it. not gonna help. <laughs> they will do everything in their power to fuck you over if you start doing that shit to them. Trust me. Best thing to do is like even if they're a dick to you, just be nice back to them so they can't have that ammo to do more. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, but they they are, and it's not like 
it's not their fault. It's just the way they go through training, the, their mentality. It's a culture thing with them. Um, my, and I don't like this this premise of police. And all my police friends and everyone I've known who's been a police officer have this tendency where it's us versus them. Where they go through training and and they're training shit, by the way. It's like, what, four months, six months or something like that? Of no, I think it was a couple of years. No, it's only like a couple of months. Oh, really? Yeah, it's <laughs> fuck all. Like, it's ridiculous how little Hang training on, they get. This up. I need to look this up right now. Um, it's not long. My sergeant's course was like... Well, yeah. Order of it. Um... Twenty-four weeks. There you go. Police officer training, approximately twenty-four weeks. Okay. How many? Um, how many? That's, that's not two a year. That's, that's no. Not, that's, that's half a year. That's yeah, about six months. Yeah. Um, Which I mean, I make it makes sense in a way. Okay, hear me out, right? I don't need my average cop to understand copyright infringement law. I don't need my average cop to understand Nine or um, months, business, apparently. like business, uh, business, um, yeah. taxation laws. I don't even need them to understand that. I need them to understand uh, criminal law. Yeah. I need them to understand traffic law. I need to understand. Yeah. I need them to understand. Um, oh, what's the other one? Like I, just general uh, public. Uh, public laws. Yeah, I can't remember the official name of yeah, it. But like, there's like what three sets of laws I need them to yeah. understand. That's it, right? Like, and that's fine. Um, and then so if they want to specialize, and they go into the other fields. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, like, back to what I was saying, like, you cannot be doing anything wrong, and you get pulled over, and and this has happened to quite a few people I know in the car community, where. The one time they weren't doing anything wrong and they've never been caught by police or had any prior um, interactions in a negative way with police where they're mm. just driving their, their, their Ford or their Commodore completely stock. Nothing's wrong with it. Um, it's actually really clean cars. Every single one's been like a really clean car. Mm. They pull them over, breathalyze and test all the things. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. They do all the... They check all the tread. Treads are good. Heights of tread. They couldn't pin anything on them. So what do they do? They go pop your bonnet. Oh, I suspect your engine's got an oil leak. And then they replied back, "That's that's grease. No, yeah. that's an oil leak." And they defected them for an engine oil leak. So therefore, they have to go over the pits to get it removed. Like if that's not a fucking quota thing or dick that, move. That has to be quota. Like the that's ridiculous. Like, and they do do that a lot. Like when people say this thing, oh, if you just don't break the law, you won't have a problem. I'm I'm sorry, no, that's not true. Sometimes the law comes and finds you. Exactly. When you get an individual that has no ethical, um, moral, Com no compass, moral compass, no moral compass, like you're gonna get fucked over. And you get that in yeah. anything. Like you, you can get that from a salesperson. You know, you go to buy something and that guy will charge you like 20% more than the other person next to him. You, you get that. People will do that. But you just got to remember that there are laws in place. And this is why it's important to understand those laws. So then that way you can protect yourself when you need to fight them. And you will have to fight them because you shouldn't let them get away with it. Downside with defects though, um, this is the backwards thing about Australia. If you get defected by a, a cop in in our state in particular, I don't know what it's like for yours, Spliffy, but you can't fight it. If a cop puts a defect on your vehicle, the only person that can take that defect off is the issuing police officer. Oh, how the fuck is that not against our constitution of innocent to proven guilt, uh, from innocent to proven guilty. I don't think we have that in our constitution. No, it is. It's, it's one of our, it's, it's one of our legal requirements to the presumption of innocence. Part of part of our um, criminal uh, criminal um, due process shit. Yeah, it's written on a piece of paper. Doesn't necessarily mean it happens in all. Happens I just I life. I just don't understand that at my, all. My my issue with the quota uh, is it is a couple of things, a couple of levels to it, right? So yeah. if all your cops come back 
and they didn't make a single arrest, that's either a really good thing or a really bad thing. Yeah. Um, but when you start setting up quotas, it starts setting up this whole perception of, uh, of, of how, cr- um, rampant crime is that, you know, if you've got, yeah. two, if you've got two to like 10 officers out and each of them has, has a quota of 15, it's like 150 crimes that have to be committed in order for them <laughs> to meet that, to satisfy those quotas. Right. Yeah. So it sets up this this whole perception that the that, that crime's everywhere and, oh, you're going to find it everywhere. Everyone's going to die. It's the end of the world. That's my problem with quotas is that if, if the cop, you know, sees, if, if the cop uh, sees a crime, writes it down, and then maybe nine crimes later, they see, oh, shit, there's been, you've, you've reported nine crimes today. We should probably ramp things up. Yeah. That doesn't happen. It's just like, oh, okay, you found 15 crimes, whatever. It's like, huh? <laughs> that doesn't is, make a lot of sense. Yeah, the thing is with quotas, though, it's, it's usually only directed at traffic infringements. They don't actually have a quota of how many arrests they have. Right. Um, because, because, like you said, not everyone is committing crimes. In, in Australia, yeah. we're actually pretty lucky that, um, com- in comparison to a lot of other countries, uh, crime rates are pretty low. Yeah, we got bikies and stuff, but, like... Uh, my, most crimes, they happen, and they're like you know, there's a couple crimes, there's like cr- multiple crimes a day, but like compared to other um, countries, it's not like millions. It's pretty peaceful here. Yeah. yeah, millions of crimes a day. I mean, there are oh, areas, fuck. obviously, like anywhere else, like the area that I live within, for example. Um, it's a very low economic area, and crimes happen regularly. Most of the time, they don't get caught, though. That's the thing. Um, like. The amount of meth heads walking around selling and shooting up, and they don't get busted. But um, it's not it's not that it's not that bad here. But um, it's funny that we say that because you got countries like Sweden. They're having issues with fucking gangs. Oh yeah, they're having massive issues. Massive at the issues with right gangs now. because the dumb fucks don't have a proper police system. This is this is a one thing that I don't understand with Europeans, right? So um, this includes fucking England too. When you basically take away um, self defense options from your police um, policing bodies, you open up a avenue of um, no fear from the criminals. Where the criminals don't fear consequences, especially when your laws are pretty like lenient or a joke, essentially, where someone can murder someone, and get away with it. Um, and a lot of these European countries are like that; they're, they're too lenient on on their legislation. No one's saying like death penalty or anything like that, but they they obviously wrote the laws with a fucking big heart, thinking that you mm. know big heart prevails. But I'm sorry, criminals don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> um Come bad on. people and monsters are real and they don't care um your laws mean nothing to them and if you don't have police force with adequate equipment to apprehend or um catch them essentially um they're just going to kill you because they have guns and you don't and in, in in Europe, it is really easy to get guns across the border because you can walk across the border. Um, these guys don't have nor near the amount of border security that we do because we have a big ocean of bodies. So it's really hard to get guns in and out of our country. Um, but your countries, no, it's like really fucking easy to get across with illegal firearms. And again, illegal firearms. You can have a strict gun laws where no one can have a gun, but illegal firearms, it doesn't matter. Like, your laws don't matter to criminals. This is the thing that I just try so hard to get through people's heads. Criminals don't give a fuck about your laws. Like, for example, in Australia, the amount of people that drive around without a license to drive is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. There's so many still. And they brought out imprisonment uh, laws and stuff like that, where, like, if you get caught more than twice, you go to prison. Um, still happens a lot. You know, teenagers are stealing cars left, right, and center in Victoria. Um, they just don't give a shit. And 
and youth crime is actually a big, big example of this problem is when there's no um, severe consequences or even just fucking good old fear. Um, they don't have fear of the consequences or care. And so therefore the, the crime and the violence actually goes up. Um, there is a catch 22 of this, obviously, like if cops all have guns, then the chances of the cops getting shot are a lot higher because they're mm. going to shoot first and ask questions later, the criminal side of things. Um, you see that in like America where cops get shot all the time and it's because the criminals know the cops are going to shoot them if they don't shoot first. Um, which to me, that's again, another silly argument with, with, with criminals in America, because as soon as you kill a cop, you're basically just written your own death warrant. They're going to kill you. Um, cause they are like, <laughs> they're going to kill you. <laughs> um, but everywhere else, like here, our cops have guns. I, I like our police's, um, the way they sort of, they have guns. I would never trust them to shoot it cause they can't shoot with, they can't shoot a barn door, uh, a, a bar door, <sighs> a barn door. Right again. They can't shoot a barn door. They're shit shots. Um, I know a few individuals that actually go and take their personal time to practice shooting and they are actually decent. And then you've got obviously your special forces or our star force, you know, they're good mm-hmm. shots cause they're training all the time with them. But our general on the beat cop, like if he had his gun out, I would not feel safe. If I had, if I was in a hostage, I wouldn't feel safe. No, no. He would more likely shoot me and the criminal would be fine. Um, so, you know, but the point is, is they have a gun. So therefore criminals are less likely going to, um, try and attack them. I mean, they still do, but less likely. Um, and in Sweden, they don't have guns on them from what I'm aware of. And so they're being attacked by these, um, these gang members and a lot of people dying. Like it's not, not a joke. Um, so, you know, I I just don't understand Europeans ideas and philosophies and I hate it when they try and just like America, they try and sort of like, we're the better people. I think look how low our crime rate is. (laughs) I'm quite certain of this too, is that this is the psychological effects of a post world war two Europe where, yeah, the lack of compassion led to the first world war and the second world war. So they just completely threw all the philosophy out. Uh, yeah. That may have allowed all of that to happen and just said, no, we need to be as compassionate as humanly possible. What I don't think they're fully understanding is that this is very much like a pendulum that yeah. needs to remain balanced because on one hand you have not enough compassion, which led to, the second world war or effectively led up to the second world war and then you have what could very well be happening now which is too much compassion and not enough uh rule because yeah what ends up what ends up happening is that it, it punishes the people either way the people who are following the the code of conduct the unwritten rules of society get punished yeah and that happens in all situations including here in australia um you know, uh, the amount of road laws and stuff like that they bring out um, end up hindering us um, all the time. And if they bother it, yeah. Like, it. To, to put an example about road laws, I, I get in these arguments with these people online. Not, not argument. Some arguments discuss their arguments. Their argu- yeah, they're their arguments. Their arguments. Yeah, all the time with people who think that they know more than me and they some cases that is true they do know more than me like there's been a few cases we've been talking to lawyers and stuff like that and i didn't know they were and you know i've had someone try to argue me as a cop and he was actually so wrong <laughs> and i was like quoting him legislation because this is one thing me and Spiffy were just touching on police don't know every single law they, no they don't it's not their job to know every single law their job is to mm. Mm, I don't. I disagree with that. Well, I think, they're supposed I think- to know. They're supposed to know enough to basically. There's going to be common laws that they know are going to be crossed and that are easy to remember. But the problem is, even those common laws that are like, they they don't really focus on them. But my point is, all right. Yeah. Ugh, this is heavy. 
Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you picking? <laughs> Pick up a steering wheel. I think it's important for. It's this, more important this for a place here, to right? all there. Oh, here we go. When I fought my red light camera, right, the evidence and all that's in here as well. Oh, I shit. <laughs> went down the rabbit hole of Australian legislation, federal and state. Yep. This right. contains the Australian Road Traffic Act for my state, and it can, can, contains the ADR standards of our country mm -hmm. are all in this. So when you fucking try and argue with me about fucking laws and stuff like that, <laughs> I actually have printed copies. I spent money on fucking printing shit out. <laughs> so fuck you, because you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, back to my topic. There's one person that I got an argument with in here, <laughs> and it's a fuck you. <laughs> I just had to put that out there. Um, yeah, so, so my, my, I've always, um, sort of tried really hard to sort of keep in, in tabs with the, the current legislation on Australian, um, uh, road laws and stuff like that. For example, um, uh, the biggest one is traffic cameras. They removed the privacy act, um, in our state, therefore allowing, well, not remove the privacy, they modified. So in in the old um, Privacy Act, basically cameras weren't allowed to take photos of the drivers because they weren't allowed to show your face because it conflicted with the privacy legislation in the mm -hmm. state, right? So so we weren't, all cameras were outgoing, so they would take a photo of the rear of the vehicle. They then decided that, well, that's kind of silly because all our Czech Regos uh, cameras all take front-facing photos. And, um, and obviously, you know, every public building you go into is, you know, CCTV um, security cameras and whatnot. So, like, what's the point? So, they rewrote the law. So, now, all of a sudden, um, traffic cameras can take both directions now. So, they're set up so they can take oncoming and, and going away there was also another reason why they did it is because now it's all infrared um where it used to be a flash and obviously you can't have a flash facing the driver because it would, <laughs> yeah. it'll blind yeah. them um so you know that that made sense too but then when they went infrared um they still had that privacy act about the face thing so then they changed that and now they're like okay cool it's removed also, is a good thing about it as well. You can't do the old, um, I wasn't driving, it was my mum, and get your mum to take the demerit points so or you don't lose your license. the other way around. Yeah, or the other way around. Um, so, because I take a photo of your face now on oncoming, if it's an oncoming, um, you can't say that it wasn't you because there's a nice big picture of you there. So, yeah. um, so that's a good thing as well for, for them. And I, I, I think that is... I think that is just as well. Like, if if you're caught speeding, <laughs> and you can get away with doing the whole, oh, I was mum driving, and ask her to you pay the fine, and then obviously you ask her to take the demerit points, um, accumulate the demerit points. Uh, you know you're gonna do it, but in 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 real fairness, like honestly, if if you get a photo of you and it is actually you then unfortunately he kind of have to take it uh you I, I i am negative against like laws and stuff but i'm also on the sign like if you get caught you get caught. you have to wear it it's consequences you should always own your consequences um the other thing about that when you too. don't do anything wrong is when i have a problem and you mm. have to fight it um the um the other thing about that too is that you might be in the privacy of your own car, but you're also out in a public space driving yeah. on the road, public and that, road. That also comes into like our state uh, laws, and this is another one um, that actually I'm pretty sure this goes for all the states that have dry zones. So a lot of people um, think that if you're, uh, I suppose other states say they protect this by having no open bottles of alcohol in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um. See, our state, we legally can drink while driving. Um, it's perfectly legal Somehow. here. Yeah, it's perfectly legal. Yeah, you can do it. Um, you're just not allowed to be over the limit. So you can have a beer while driving home. It's perfectly legal. And I actually <laughs> don't have a problem with that at all. 
I mean, what's the difference between having a drink while you're driving, right? There's only one, mm. one drink, so one standard drink, say, versus having a drink and then going for a drive. Mm. After you finish Mechanically work. speaking, there is no difference. Exactly. There is no difference. So why would it be illegal? Um, well, why does it need to be illegal? It's the way I look at it. As long as you're under the limit and as long as... Um, no... I'm sorry, but if you if you can't drive and have a drink of water or, or soft drink or a beer while you're driving, then you need to look at yourself and realize that um, you need some practice on driving. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can eat and drive. I can drink and drive. It's not hard at all. You pick a time and place. You don't do it, obviously, when I'm changing gears or, or whatever. It, you, Usually do it, you know, when you're on a nice straight road and you have cruise control on, you don't have to worry about anything and you just have a couple of drinks here and there and keep going. I, I don't understand how people struggle with that. Um, have you seen that uh, Top Gear segment where they were like, ni- like seeing what they could do while driving? Like Jeremy was- No, I haven't. Jeremy was like knitting a sweater while driving. It was doing <laughs> perfectly fine. Mind you, they are oh. on a tra- racetrack, but still like- Oh, yeah. They had yeah. obstacles and stuff like that to avoid as well. But, like, yeah, he just was, like, knitting while driving. Like, you, you'd be surprised, like, if you're a good driver, you can do a lot of things while driving. You shouldn't, but you can. It's not that, it's not that hard. When you, when you that get that experience in driving, it just becomes second nature. Like, yeah. Um, but, <coughs> but the point is... If you don't understand the laws, you can be caught out. And going back to the drinking one, in our state, we have dry zones. Like, for example, a lot of the beach fronts, like, uh, are dry zones. You're not allowed of alcohol consumption um, outside of any licenses, licensed premise, right? So yeah. Some people have been caught out where they're having drinks in the car. And like I said, in, in our state, we don't have open bottle laws or anything like that. And, and so the driver isn't drinking to get drunk, but the passengers are. And, um, and a cop's pulled up to him and go, you can't do that. And like, but we're in our car and like, you're in a dry zone though. You're in your car, but you're in a dry zone. So therefore it's illegal. And they all got fined. Right. They all got fined except for the driver because he wasn't drinking alcohol. But, mm. um, yeah. So, you know, that's a, that's a problem. Um, if, if you get caught out with that and, you know, sometimes you get police officers that are really like understandable and they're having a good time. And they're like sympathetic and they won't find you or we'll just give you a warning. And then sometimes you just get a dick that will just throw you under the book. And then while he's there, he's going to defect the car. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they just to really that. add insult to oh, injury. Fuck yeah. like, I remember once, like, we, we oh, were, uh, this is a story, right? So, we, um, so in our state, they, there's a lot of laws um, on car modifications and stuff like that, but we are a lot mm. more laxed, relaxed than other states. Um, for example, like other states can't have pod filters. We can have pod filters. You can't have coil over suspensions. I'm pretty sure we can here. I have to look that up and refresh my memory, but I reckon you can have coil overs here, but you just, um, they have to be a certain specification or something like that. Uh, wheel spaces are a big one. They are 100% legal across the board. And you should never put wheel spaces on a car. They are fucking dangerous. I've seen so many accidents because of wheel spaces. You should not put them on your car. I'm sick and tired of people in full drive communities saying get a wheel spacer. What is a it's, wheel space? Uh, is a wheel spacer so, like that bar? Like, like, explain to what the, that is. So wheel spacer in full drives is very common. Mm-hmm. The, they're basically a block of metal that sit between the wheel and your um rotor or your hub yeah yeah so it extends the Why wheel out to give to you well, exactly it's a weak point isn't it you're extending so when you have your wheel and your hub connected together like that it's a perfectly flat surface and usually the wheel goes over your hub like that and so yeah. it kind of sits a lot more it's a lot more sandwiched together there's more surface area holding it together and it's it's a even um, cause if you do your wheel nuts right, um, it's an even pressure and it's, it's not going anywhere unless you hit it with a, a sphere force, like a curb at a speed. A real space is usually a round 
piece of block of metal that goes in between them and it's smaller in diameter. And the problem is now you've got this big heavy wheel on the outside that acts as leverage, right? Yeah. And then you've got your hub, which is smaller. So you've got this big thing here, a small little thing, and then you've got this thing here that's bigger than the small little space. Yeah, that doesn't make any so fucking sense. It's a recipe for disaster. They are dangerous and they are illegal and you're an Seriously, you should not do it. Shouldn't do it. If you want to expend out your reel and you want to offset it, do it the legal way and get an offset rim. That is actually designed to do that. Reel spaces have no R&D. There's no safety precautions. There's no engineering. It's just a block of metal. That's all it is. Um, and they're just they're so dangerous. I don't know why people do them. Because um, they're not mechanically minded. It's just, you just think of physics. It's just not. Not a lot, good idea. Like, as I've seen people's like completely snap their wheels while on tracks because of wheel spaces. And oh they, yeah, they were stuck. They weren't going anywhere. They had to leave their car there. Um, <laughs> and I've seen them come off. Um, I've seen them on a drift car on a track and they've broken off. And oh, that would be very pleasant to yeah, watch. Um, so that's real spacer there. So they're not very big. What? Not very big at all. Um, like, what is the point? Like, what satisfaction do you get? Like, it's exactly yeah, my, my it's, wheel it's, is it's, a it's, bit it's literally out. to offset your wheel to stick it out more. Like, for example, because um, the wider your stance of your vehicle, the better stability. But it's just so not safe. Like, yeah, like you I see need that I kind mean? of stability like, when I'm going 220 yeah. kilometers an hour. But the problem is, I can't go 220 kilometers an hour. See, uh, wheel spaces you also have to have uh, longer nuts as well. So that's also an added risk as well because now mm. you've got this added space here. Where if you have mm. an offset rim, your offset rims still use the exact same length nut as your stock does because. All the all the offset rim does is basically the mounting point on your rim just moves over and the wheel moves out. So it's a structural thing. Where real spaces what, they're just not structurally sound. I just do not know why people use them. Why would somebody not want to have wait, why would why would somebody want less space in their lane when they're driving down the road? That doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Well, it, it's stability. Like, you only do it on performance reasons. Like, in full driving and stuff like that, um, you want it so then that way you can extend your stability and whatnot. So Yeah, so when you turn the corner going 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, what I've got up here right now, if you can see it, is it coming up? Yeah, okay. This is the, um, the ADR booklet, um, and I've particularly yeah. got up the uh legislation hello, ray. Uh, hey ray how are you i meant to say hello to you earlier we just we were just talking so basically what i'm this is what the legislation so in australia we have the adr which is basically the australian design rules so this is the the laws that car manufacturers motorbike manufacturers boat manufacturers basically any single vehicle um that is produced and sold in Australia has to abide by these laws. Now, the reason why I say you should understand these laws is because there's been a lot of arguments and misconceptions about lights in particular. Um, and as you can see here, it just goes on basically, you know, it has to be like all this sort of shit. Um, and I have been getting into some talks. I did a video a while ago about converting my stock navara from globes to leds and in my state it actually speculates it is legal as long as it's compliant with this with this basically this book that i've got here right now right and for a little bit of information led lights accordance to the adr uh, for uh, retrofitting or aftermarket LED lights that you fit on a car that does not come out stock with them. All cars nowadays come out standard with LED lights. There is no ruling, so therefore technically it is not legal. And as you can see, I'm going through right here and you can't even, men it doesn't even mention anything. This is the whole light globe section. <laughs> it doesn't even mention LED lights or HRDs or any of that. And the reason why is because they just simply don't cover it. 
Now, when that happens, and this is the way law works, right? So there's no ruling from the Australian design rule on uh, these kits. So if your state comes out with a ruling, which my state does, that fills that space where the ADR doesn't have that ruling. So in our state, if, as long as you meet the conditions of the legislation within your state, you're perfectly legal. So my car is actually legal. I've gone through it multiple, multiple times. And then the other day I got an argument with someone and I refreshed my memory. I went through the books and all that sort of stuff and I refreshed it. And, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm safe to say that I'm 100% legal with it. Um, because my state speculates now, my other states are different though. Other states it's not legal. So when you need to understand road laws, you need to look into this sort of shit and it takes ages to find shit. You can't just like, it's government law is just so freaking boring. <laughs> it's written. It is written is, really is, dryly. It is written very um, stupid. No wonder why people can, um, really like if, misinterpret if you, it. if you ever get the time go read the copyright act of 1968 and you can literally see elements of of that law you can quite clearly see yeah. that some of those those sections have been shoehorned <laughs> into the law because it is yeah. so it has such inconsistent yeah. flow uh and it's just really hard and probably the driest document i've ever read in my entire life yeah. it's so painful yeah um so so the two laws that you should really follow is your state road traffic acts and your um adr laws now the reason why adr is not so crazy because essentially as long as you keep your car stock legally speaking you're fine um because because that's all that's all that's all it does it just it just sort of makes sure it keeps you keep it stock i don't understand why on obs ray's second chat thing isn't appearing but yet on twitch it is the alien looking smiley faces obs isn't updating the chat i just realized that okay I just wrote hi. Uh, see if, <laughs> hi. See if it updates on that. Mm. Oh, that <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm gonna, have to, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to watch the Twitch one, I think, to keep an eye on the chat because um OBS is not updating. Alright, so no, right. um so there's a little bit of a ra- rant there, but it's be- it's because like there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of miscommunications. And I find that a lot of people that talk to me about the laws and regulations don't actually read the laws and regulations and they go off of what his mate said or worse, they go off what a police officer said. <laughs> Cause again, police officers don't always know everything. Um, no, it is difficult to know everything, it but is. it's also unless you're really a lawyer, useful unless you're, an, unless you're an actual road traffic lawyer where it is your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. um then you're expected to know everything about it because you literally read and breathe that shit every day yeah um and the lawyer that i had like years ago when i was finally read like camera he was really good like that because he was an ex-traffic cop as well uh ex-traffic prosecutor cop so he was a police officer but he was a prosecutor and so he knew that side of things and and then he went to the other side and was becoming a defendant lawyer so then he knew both sides um, but he basically said the way the Road Traffic Act is written, in particular my state and other states as well, um, they so if you want to find a legislation that is so um, ruthless and you can't win or an unbeatable legislation, it will be the Road Traffic Acts of the states. Um, the way they write them is basically if you get a fine, you can't really fight them. You can you can try it, like seriously do it, but they they basically the, um, design it to set set you up to fail, essentially. The, That's why it's really important thing, to understand not, so you don't break it. 
I'm not sure if it, if this is the same thing in your state, but in New South Wales, if you fight uh, a fine, uh, you can't fight another fine for another five years, whether you win or lose. Wait, what? That's not legal. Yeah, How the fuck is that legal? Uh, peeling fines in New South Wales. Um... You, you should British. have... There is always a right to appeal. I'm not sure if... That's like a... That is, again, another constitutional right. Okay, I'll, I might have to do some more reading up about that. I can understand um, if it's... A, if, you, if, for example, there's a certain amount of appeals you can do on the same fine. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure you can appeal any sort of court decision if you increase it to the higher-ups. Hmm. Um, because otherwise I think that's a, a violation of constitutional rights. Because I know that's um that's another thing in our constitution I'm I'm confident in. Not hundred percent certain. I need people Top obviously rates. to fact check me, but I'm pretty sure in our constitution it says that you do have the right to appeal a court's decision. But it's same thing again, it escalates up. So if you're on the lower courts um, yeah. It will then have to go up to the Supreme Court and then up from there, essentially. Um, so there is a, there's a limit, and there's also a financial limit as well because it's fucking yeah. expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not everyone like I wouldn't be able to afford to go to court most time anyway. Um, yeah. Let alone have a lawyer. Maybe I will read more about that. But yeah, I I I can't see they're going. Oh, if you appealed this traffic fine and then I decide to throw you a speeding ticket that you weren't actually speeding it was a car next to you and you're fighting me on it you can't appeal that decision or whatever um i can't see that being a, a thing so, i don't know i don't know i definitely look into it, some food for thought that's for sure yeah i might i'll look further into it. i read it somewhere i don't yeah. even remember i'm sure i read it somewhere um uh that was oh what's the word that was credible. I'm sure I read it from a credible source. I just don't remember where. Yeah. I don't remember which credible source. Yeah, it's fair. But, um, yeah, I find law fascinating, and my parents were trying to push me to become a lawyer, but I just would never want to do it. Um, the reason why is um, I, I don't like the culture in law. I don't like how you scratch my back, I scratch yours in a real toxic manner yeah um i don't like the fact that lawyers can be really corrupt and i've seen it firsthand um oh, in yeah. court like um for example obviously i'm gonna name anyone but i saw an instance where um it was involving me but it was involving family where we literally watched in the main foyer while we're waiting to go into the courtroom and hear the um, the plaintiff's um, defense, like his witnesses, be coached by the lawyer in front of everybody, including the defense lawyers, on what they have to say when they're on the stand and what the script is. They gave them a script to read. The lawyer did. The, oh, fire, the prosecuting lawyer gave him the script in front of everybody right that is illegal and um and it was brought to the attention of the um the bar and they turned around and said that for you to try and debar the person you essentially have to sue them for it it's like really like there was a, a court full of witnesses, judges, lawyers, so many people, of high ranks people, witnessed this. No <laughs> one said or batted an eyelid because I, I just, I don't like that. I don't like that you can have a corrupt lawyer just literally breaking the law in front of other people that have a, um, are supposed to like you know stop that shit from happening because you know it taints their name as well even if they're a respectable person like it looks bad on them because that's yeah. the person that's in your same industry 
And, you know, this, this person, this individual that did this as well has also been debarred three times. Um, so, he's a real piece of shit. <laughs> how they get how does he keep pa- passing the like how do they keep giving him his license back if he gets debarred that many times that's my point it's, it's, there's no consequences when it comes that's why i don't like it um you know it was a guy that i was working with he was starting to be a lawyer and he was telling me he loves it though mind you this guy loves this sort of shit mm. he was telling me that so he finished his law degree and then he had to find a law firm that will have him as an intern because you have to yeah. intern or not intern might not be interning they call it but you essentially have to be like a, a postgraduate and then work in a law firm do the coffee do all that fucking shitty jobs <laughs> work your way up to you actually start working on cases on your own you know and i get it i get it you learn from the basics and you work your way up i understand that side of things but he was saying that you have to take your uh potential boss out for dinner you, and he would have to pay as well. <laughs> um, and he would have to suck his flagellant, not actual <laughs> physically suck it, but like suck his dick essentially like ego, suck his In the metaphorical sense. In the metaphorical sense. Like, do you like 40? Yeah, I love 42, even though deep down he hates it, you know. <laughs> and just like really win this guy over to then just hire him. Um and apparently they just do that. Like, it's just their culture, the way they do things. And I just, I've, I've never really been one to enjoy that sort of side of things. No. Um, I've always been. I, I don't like uh, the elite class at all. Because <laughs> one thing I precious hate. Precious people I refer to, I like to refer to them one, as. One thing I hate, right. And this is what our government, our politicians and all that sort of stuff need to understand. And criminals know this. You can have as much money in the world and think you're really powerful, but all it takes is one madman with a mind set against you to topple all that. So what I'm saying is you can be the most powerful and influential person in the world, but all it takes is one guy to come up and stab you (laughs) to take all that away. (laughs) So my point is, is you essentially need to be a little bit modest about yourself because life is short and people just don't give a shit. And those people that don't give a shit have the power because they're the ones that fucking can make things. I am short. Leave me alone. (laughs) Um, Intrusive thoughts. (laughs) Um, Essentially, it's what I'm getting. Because, like, you know how, like, you get, you see people, they're like, you know, like they're rich and they just think they can do what they want. They talk down to like a servant or something like that. They're like, mm. oh, you get paid low quality job. I'm paying for your wage, blah, 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 blah. And then that person's like, okay, cool. No worries. I'll just, um, I'll just spit in your food. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? This is what I'm getting at. People need to be a little bit more humble. And I think that lawyers need to do the same as well as judges judges i think need to go out and fucking live a little um and experience life as a normal person because i think a lot of judges um are detached from society so they're supposed to pass judgment on people but in truth they actually have been so excluded because you know it takes years to become a judge Oh, yeah, I've no doubt about that. They've been excluded from society in their own little fucking legal bubble for a very long time. Um, That they kind of have a warped perception of how things work. And most of them are incredibly uneducated on other topics. Like, they're incredibly educated on the field that they obviously do. But when it comes to other things like technology, for example, um, they have no idea. Like, Mm. in, in America, for example, the amount of false imprisonments have occurred through online interactions um for example there was a guy uh, i don't know if you've heard of this story but um he's 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 a, he's a twitch streamer and he went to jail because he was on runescape and he said that he would shoot someone's school up <laughs> <laughs> and um obviously you don't joke about it. and he was joking he wasn't serious but uh some little bitch fucking reported him to the feds and they rocked up and they arrested him. 
and um and he tried really hard to like prove that it was a joke it was online trolling but the judge had no fucking idea what runescape was or how it works it didn't understand that it wasn't it was only a text like text to talk, like text bubble because in runescape you know, yeah. talk and it comes up in the little bubble um and it wasn't like sad or it wasn't malice or like it was just joking and it wasn't even the person he was talking to that reported it was some other person because those two are like shit talking each other and he's like i think he was 18 at the time as well so he was like barely fucking legal in america we're not even legal because you know 21 over there yeah for um drinking and whatnot and uh and yeah, they they imprisoned him for five years, and then he ended up getting ten because he uh, obviously when he was in prison, he ended up falling off the rails a little bit and got in the wrong crowd, and it got worse. <laughs> so um, yeah, he was like he was getting in fights and ended up fucking started using drugs, and yeah, like prison was not the answer for punishment. That's for sure. Um, it did not necessarily need to go to that. Um. And it was all because the judge didn't understand technology. He didn't get it at all. And then you've also got, um, you know, Count Dunkula, that whole thing where, you know, they were trying to imprison him for a, a troll fucking video on his pug. And again, the judge didn't understand technology didn't understand what online community is about and didn't understand how humor works um in these online settings and how he was just basically trolling his girlfriend <laughs> and he ended up you know getting all these fines and stuff he didn't go to jail but yeah the the funny like i always remind myself about that case and i i, I always think it's one of the funniest situations it is it's stupid because it's okay, so because of what happened to Count Dankula, yeah, um, because he basically was reamed through the coals of that, he now owns his own business, yeah, he now does whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. And the people who wanted him to shut up are the sense of the people who made him. And it's, yeah. it's honestly, I have to remind myself all the time about that because I think it's one of the funniest situations. Yeah. Because if no one said anything, he'd just be the irregular, you'd be just be typical bloke that hates his call center job and just would rather do anything yeah, well, else. You know, he was working in security and stuff like that. And I think I actually probably kind of saved him a little bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Because if you've ever heard his stories, like, I have heard a couple, yeah. Um, for example, like there was a story where he was sitting with his girlfriend. I think I think they're married now, actually. But anyway, they are was, married. Yeah, they are married. Um, he was sitting with his girlfriend, and they were having brunch together, I think. And some guy ran up to him, and stabbed him. The fuck. Yeah, yeah, he's been stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> um, hell. yeah, the guy he knew the guy. Um, and he stabbed him, and um. It was over something bullshit too, apparently. But yeah, he um, you know, he was like telling that story that you know he's been fucking stabbed, and then he was just like, "What the fuck did you stab me for? You can't!" Like, <laughs> and and yeah, and so it's the sort of that's the sort of environment that he was living in as well. Like he was living in a very violent sort of situation. Like he was working as a security guard. Um, always getting in fights and like you know having some real rough people around him, and now yeah. he's you know he's got money and funds. He's able to sort of move away from all that, and he just focuses on what he does, loves to do, and and he's happy. You know, well as, as far as I know, he's happy. I don't I don't know yeah, the guy. Happy. He looks happy. I hope yeah. he's happy. But um, you know, so it silver lining. He didn't go to prison. He made yeah. he made Scotland just show how fucked it is, and and this is a thing that a lot of people don't understand about Scotland and England is um, well, their relationship between the two. It was England. Yeah, I know it's England. So yeah. <laughs> people people go on about um, for example, people go on about um oppression, right? Oppression um on a community standpoint, society standpoint, blah blah blah. 
in Scotland and Ireland, they are oppressed in so many different forms by the English government. So they are purposely forced by law to not be able to climb above a certain position. That's just the way England has structured their legislation and the people in the power don't want that structure to change because it keeps them in power. So that's why in Ireland and Scotland, their laws are so fucking backwards. And if you're a Scottish or an Irish person, it's fucked because um, you can't fight anything. You can't, you have no rights, you have no protections. Um, because the English government made the laws of those countries to be like that. Um, and I'm talking about Northern Ireland, by the way. Ireland is not, obviously, Ireland's, the Republic of Ireland's different, but um, Northern Ireland and Scotland's laws are very, very, like, oppressive to the people of, um, to the Scottish and the Irish. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it, and Count Dunkley is like really points that out with, you know, what he was saying that like, you know, he tried appealing this bullshit fucking ruling and basically they blocked him to every corner because in Scotland you have no rights, essentially. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's kind of no wonder why the Scottish hate the English so much. And it's because of that reason. Um, I wonder how. And the Irish I mean, we all know how we we all know how America uh, basically gained independence from from Britain. You and six, same I wonder reason. how. Was, same yeah, well, I wonder how. Yeah. I wonder how Australia gained independence from from England. I mean, we are still in the Commonwealth, but I mean, it's we're not we don't have the same sort of. I think we. Hierarchy I as, think we gained independence because of America. I think that if America didn't win i reckon it would be a different story oh yeah absolutely i reckon england I reckon, would probably be, yeah because um, i reckon be... because america won um they won the the, the revolution the, the the war for independence um england probably readjusted their attitude towards the other countries like canada india china and australia um, um, I don't think, oh, uh, yeah, mm, not some, cause like the, the declaration of independence was signed in 1776. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think India really got their dependence until like 1960. Yeah. Um, but the, and, but the attitude of English, like, um, um, this is pure speculation. I don't know. I wasn't there. I so I won't know. But so. I don't think that's accurate. I think. Don't reckon? No, because the, I mean, like 200 years is a really, no, actually it's like nearly 300 years. And it was the post, I mean, the post second world war, uh, post second world war Europe is, uh, where Britain really lost most of its colonies. Um, it's, yeah. I'd speculate that it's because it just couldn't afford to keep funding the, their Navy yeah. to, or keep funding their Navy and also, America developed its own superpower and create and basically went to globalization. They they basically went nuclear on yeah. their um on their on their navy budget to to enforce globalization during the nineteen uh pre basically post Second World War. Pro I'd probably yeah. say about nineteen fifty. Well, no, it would be pro before nineteen fifty three because um nineteen fifty three yeah. nineteen fifty to nineteen fifty three was the, the Korean War. So the globalization would have started before that. So it would be about 1947, I think, was when globalization yeah. was essentially started. Um, although in saying that as well, Australians have never really been one to revolt, which kind of annoys me. Well, I mean... Australia, to, Australia, like, to, we had the Eureka I, Stockade and we had um, the Rum Rebellion. But we didn't really have much else. Like, we've never really revolted. Um, I think... I think I don't think we've ever, ever really had to. I think that's the we main kinda, reason. We kind of did, though, because in World War One, like, we were fodder. Like, they sent us to die. And no yeah. one did anything about it. And that really pissed me off when I heard about it. You know, like, when, um, it made me I upset when that literally, like, they were told. Like, the, the English captains and whatnot were told that we will die and that there's not going to be 
any strategic value in the decisions that they were doing. And the light would just keep sending them over the trench. They just keep dying. Well, everyone was in that situation. I don't think any, any, um, any, I don't think any, uh, any yeah, but uh, they, nation they, was, or yeah, no, but any army it was, was spared from that, that. It was us, um, New Zealanders and the Irish and, um, the Scots were all the ones sent to die. There were a lot more Australian. There were there were a lot more like Australians and there were a lot more Anzacs sent to to die to just be suicide mission, like for no real reason besides to just to kill us. Um. And and that's what annoys me, is because they were willing to send us to die first and then hold their forces back. And basically not utilize them and use them on all the other fronts that basically were getting a little bit of strategic. Even if they just said, all right, so we're at a stalemate. We can't progress forward. They can't progress forward. How about we just make sure we keep stocking up and hold these lines and then just have them just sit there and just guard the lines. That would have been a lot more strategic than fucking just continuously sending them over the trenches to die. Or hell, I don't know, give them resources to dig under, um, which, you know, they did eventually do that. Um, some of them dug under and then exploded the underneath them and collapsed the trenches that way. But no, Hill sixty six, <laughs> that's probably the most. But uh, it's probably the most notorious mention yeah. of that. Um, but yeah, I'm reading reading here. Uh, to the Entente powers, uh, Great Britain, Ireland lost forty six point one million people. That is a lot. Yeah, of it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, Australia, four point five million people, which was a I shit. Think, which was a shitload because when you think about how little population we actually had, yeah, we didn't have. I think we probably had like, yeah. like entire generations of men were wiped out in World War One. Yeah, it was that um, significant. Like towns was had the, like um, all their men die. <laughs> yeah, there was the uh, the oh, I forget what it was called. It was like the buddy system where you could sign up with your buddy and then they yeah. had to quickly get rid of that because then they, they as, as you said, they what they worked out is that entire towns were getting entire, wiped yeah, out. Entire towns were getting wiped out. And then um, um yeah, it was uh it was pretty pretty bad. Um and they don't talk about that enough, I think, in schools that like because when when people get annoyed at me, it's like, why do you care about like Anzac Day Dawn service and all that sort of stuff? And you shouldn't care. War's like violent and dangerous. I'm like, it's not that I feel that our country, because World War One's like different. We didn't actually need to get involved. Like our country is not in threat at all. World War One was not a threat thing. World War One was just a pissing contest between fucking kings. Um. Oh wait, I'm totally misunderstanding. Sorry. Um. Uh, no. No, sorry. I completely misunderstood. What? Um, so the column I was reading from was the actual population. So, sorry, I completely fucked this up. So uh, Australia at the, during the first world war had a population of 4.5 million, uh, and it lost 60, nearly 62,000 soldiers, Great Britain, 46.1 million and yeah. lost 750,000 soldiers. Sorry. Just want to clarify that. Yeah. So it's a lot of people. Yeah. Cause I was reading it. I'm like, hang on. How did, how did America lose 98.8 uh million and mobilize 2.1 million that doesn't make any sense i don't <laughs> know it's wrong here oh no it's just my reading skills yeah. that's all <laughs> um yeah so like my reason for supporting dawn service and all that sort of stuff is mainly it's like it's it's my way of um remembering those people that unfortunately had to Die not by their own choice. Um, the, I do not believe in World War One in particular. That and Vietnam, uh, they did not fight for our yep. country. They fought for but another I don't country. Understand. What do you mean by you don't believe in it? No, people don't believe in it. I I support the that they I support that they they went and died and that they should be remembered because they died. Um, right, but they they didn't fight for our country. They were fighting for their, our country was made to fight for others. So if we never entered World War One, um, and we just stayed, say we we're independent, right? We were a republic. Yeah. And we just kept to ourselves. Australia would have been unaffected, except for maybe trade routes would have changed, economic changes, maybe. Hell, maybe we yeah. fucking built 
weapons and stuff like that and supplied World War One and how we were the new America. You don't know. Um, but my point is, is like it didn't directly interfere us. World War Two is a different story. World War Two was like World War Two was a threat against every single country, just like um, the Russia-Ukraine conflict at the moment is technically a threat for every country because it's like a catalyst that's going to start off another war, like World War, mm. just like World War Two. So that's a different story. So World War Two is truly the real World War, I believe. Um, where World War One was literally just a pissing contest between kings. It was like you got the King of England, King George, and he's trying to fucking settle shit between uh, the Russian king and the because they're all cousins, and yeah. the German king. Those two are fucking at each other's throats, and then you had the Ottoman Empire as well, fucking getting involved and getting politically upset with, you know, the t- chain of things they're trying to move forward and progress and whatnot and trade agreements are holding them back and blah, 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 blah. And then next minute it just blew up into a fucking war. Um, and that's what it was. It was just arguments. Uh, it wasn't like one man wanted to basically purge all fucking life of a certain ethnic background or wanted to take over or one country wanted to fucking build their empire and take over the world. Like say the, you know, all the crusades were like, um, it wasn't like that at all. It was, it was just, yeah, it was very political. Um, same with like all these war and terrorism as well. That's been very political, (laughs) but, um, so I support it because I know that those lads were lied to when they were subscript um conscripted and, and went to war i know that they were told that it was going to be a glorious thing to fight for their country and all that sort of stuff and if they got a letter and they said no they'll get the white feather and they'll shamed for it and all this sort of shit so i go to <laughs> sort of pay respects to the fact that they were put in positions that they really um didn't have to be put in so more so the reason that I think that the First World War was, in fact, a first a world war is well, because there was, was multiple. Actually, yeah, there were multiple nations involved in it. The multiple nations, yeah. um, and also like it was the first war of its scale. Yeah, because it was such an industrialized it war. It, it was, was it was yeah. stupid amount of of bullets and artillery and um tactics that and they real all, all these old <laughs> tactics that w- worked in the ball war for example or in the napoleon yeah. uh, the napoleonic era war they they don't work anymore you can't you can't have all your soldiers line up in bright blue <laughs> and ex- france um and then expect them all to survive somehow <laughs> against a machine gun because i think the first world war was the first time that a gas-operated machine gun was invented. Uh, um, you had crank operate. No, mm, that's not true. About it's, that. Yeah, it's not true. But uh, it doesn't matter. It was the first time it was implemented um, on a grand scale. I know they mm. were used in the Boer War. Um, well, is, were those crank? Uh, crank uh, no, they did. Operated? They, they had water cooled uh, machine guns in the Boer War, but there was only a handful of them. It wasn't many. No, like not not water cooled, like a. Uh, gas operated and crank operated yeah that's what i mean it was water cooled um but it was no no no, no, no op- not cooled yes because no, i'm not referring to the cooling system i'm referring to the to the um the uh yeah the, but that's uh, what i mean it was gas it was gas operated but it was water cooled because back then they right. didn't know how to cool them off efficiently right yeah okay um that's what i'm getting at uh right. what was the first what was the first machine gun made? Um, you also had portable uh, machine gun. Well, yeah. So, like, a lot. The realization, a lot of the old tactics just eighteen nineties was work. when it was first invented. Okay. Eighteen yeah. nineties. How peculiar. Yeah. Is that gas operated? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um fucking awesome <laughs> yeah they've been around for a while yeah yeah 1883 um uh invented the blowback recall and gas operated the maxmans 
Maxmans. Well, it's an interesting looking. Yeah, and also, I think tanks were invented in the First World War. They were invented that. in the First World War, um, and they were very shit. But yeah, well, I mean, they were um, they were revolutionising. They started a whole war front. I mean, the first tank was invented by the British, and it was implemented in World War One, and they were designed basically to just go over the trenches. Um, you know. Uh, so drop a couple of tanks in there, drive over the trenches. Um, how can you stop a tank, you know, when you're not equipped to, uh, to do that? And so when they first were implemented, the, the Germans were like, fucked. <laughs> they, um, <laughs> yeah. they didn't know what to do. And then not long after the Germans invented their own tanks, the, the Renault tank was invented. Um, yeah, there was, yeah, it was just started to kick off to today's. Uh, era where tanks, um, uh, you know, and they all look fucking same now. Well, yeah, because I, because I the design, the reason why they look the same is because the design, that's the optimum way they need to be designed. Yeah, I know um, it's so boring. It is boring, but um, if anything shows us, the Ukraine war has basically showed that you tanks are very obsolete. Um, they're useful, but. No, no, no. God, imagine, imagine Ukraine's war has shaped. I can't get over how much that war has fucking shaped this world in understanding how more oh, yeah, the last works. couple of years. Like, um, you know, they're trenching I, down as well, and you know, trenches are useless. <laughs> well, they can they can be of any. I'll take any cover over no cover. But but they they're useless because the drones are killing them. They've just basically made themselves death traps. Yeah, we have miniature hard to hard to see helicopters. I'm sure helicopter when helicopters were invented during the for the uh, yeah. Korean War, I'm um, sure that revolutionised a lot of stuff because now all of a sudden you can get troops in and out, uh, yep. injured troops in and out when uh, willy nilly. Um, yeah. So this is this is just one of those situations. It's just like the First World War all over again, where oh uh, shit, we've got we've got to adapt to this new technology. Yep. So. It probably won't be long until we have like some sort of EMP technology. Well, they have um, uh, the Russian. The problem is the Russians have very little funding, so it's hard for them to get resources out to their troops. But they have anti-drone tech where they've got like this radar gun um, and you point it at the drone and it sends out like a signally blocking bubble. Essentially, anything within this bubble um, that you point at, it will... um, Disable. So well, it disables the drone. Yeah, it makes them fall out of the sky. Yeah. So they have need, technology like that. All you need is to for that that weapon to send out a a frequency that disrupts the uh, carrier the yeah. carrier frequency yeah. between the, the between the tower and and the drone, and that'll do the job. Exactly. That's exactly what it does. Um, so they do have them. Um, there are certain instances where it doesn't work and the big one where it doesn't work is the suicide drones that the Ukraine's made to attack oh, uh, naval for vessels. Say. Yeah. So they're basically, what they've done is they've got a, um, a, they basically got a whole heap of, uh, secondhand jet skis. The they, fuck? They stripped them down. Yeah. And then they installed remote control devices and cameras and stuff like that. And then they put a payload on them. Yeah. And then they put them in the water and they fucking send them at top speed towards the naval vessels. And then they won't control them. But when the signals get jammed, they automatically will start swaying like side to side and go all erratic and shit. Like, yeah. Unintentionally. Un- unintentionally, though. Like, it's it's because there's no input going in, so the waves are moving the jet skis. But the problem is, it makes them unpredictable, and they're on a straight sort of a straight line, so it's going to hit its target. <laughs> so people are shooting at him frantically, and it fucking hits his boat and just blows the shit out of blows the shit out of it and disables it. It doesn't sink it, but it would you're out of action. Oh, it would do some fucking serious damage. Yeah, it, it just does. Yeah. They, yeah, basically they, they reinvented the fucking torpedo. Basically, yeah. Um, and you know how fast jet skis go, so um, uh, I think they've taken out, they've taken out a shipping container, a shipping, like a, a resource 
um, vessel, like dropping off resources to the troops. They've taken out a destroyer, a frigate, and I think they took out one of their aircraft carriers too with it. Um, yeah, it's quite quite scary seeing like, and they can make heaps of them because they're cheap. I mean, all they are, are jet skis. In in terms of like drones, like it, it, it's it really shows that you know Americans spend billions of dollars on missile technology, right? And yeah. And like the like each missile is like a couple of hundred mil just to make for it to blow up. Um, and then you got these Ukraines that like, let's get the hobbyist drone and strap up a grenade to it. <laughs> Essentially, by the yeah. sounds of it. Well, the Americans are paying like millions of dollars for missiles. Ukraines are paying about thousand dollars and a couple hundred bucks for a couple of grenades. And then jet skis, a couple of thousand dollars and a couple of thousand dollars for some explosives and computer tech. Away you go. <laughs> Just as I effective just, uh... as a missile. It's, it's scary because the fact that, you know, uh, what, what is the word? Um, what's the ingenuity is the birth of? Oh, um, oh fuck. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, that's it, right? So, like, you know, they're low on supplies and whatnot, so they have to invent their own stuff. I mean, like, why? Uh, it's real. I find it really just cognitive, like, absolute cognitive dissonant yeah. uh, to be low on resources and insist on having a war. I don't understand. Yeah, because, like, you hear that he's asking for more money from us. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, when's like, the, I when, really, when I really, enough I don't enough. like war. I, to, I, if, I, if, I hate it too. If, but. I, I reckon, I honestly believe that war would be universally regarded as bad if it didn't pay so fucking good. Yeah, or or um, create inventions that are incredibly useful to us, like mobile phones, satellite, all that is all because of war. Like every single modern medicine, every single technology that we have to this day is all from war. Everything from roads. Well, Depressing bridges, piece of information. yeah, everything. The highway, yeah, the, the the Germans invented the concept of the highway, yeah. so that way they can get ta they can drive tanks wherever they want. Exactly. Uh, and America basically stole yep. that idea. Uh, railway systems, uh, the way the um, European uh, God, it's... spent so much money on railway systems, is so then that way they can transport goods to and from, which Russians are using right now for their tanks and stuff. You know, that's how they transport the tanks to Ukraine is because rail. Um. Planes were invented because of war. Um, helicopters well, invented the because Wright of brothers war. Had, I don't know if the Wright brothers necessarily had war in mind for their invention. They did not. But the development and the future um, success of the planes is because of war. I suppose, yeah. yeah. I mean... Galileo Galilei uh, sold the the uh, telescope to the to the navy. Yeah. Uh, so that he could continue looking at the stars. Exactly. Which I feel I find is very poetic in of itself because yeah. it kind of it says a lot, really, in my mind. Um. Yeah. Like if I invented something that was pretty crazy. Um. Say for example, I invented. Oh, let's do something fucking sci-fi all right so say i invented a telecommunication device that i can communicate at any point in space you like, don't have to you just have used radio waves no 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 this doesn't use radio waves this uses say uh quantum physics or something it it, it sends communications <laughs> through fucking slip space or some bullshit like sci-fi this isn't real right, right. Say i invented a communication device like that and mm -hmm. then I was approached by several companies and that would that would want to buy the rights. And I'm like, yeah, 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 not big enough, not big enough. I guarantee you the military, probably most likely America, would come up to me and go, we'll pay you a fucking ridiculous amount of billions of dollars for this project, for this, for this pain. And I'll be like, sold. Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> Of course, I'm going to take the money. So then that way I can use that money and do things that I want to do. Yeah, until until the US bombs you with your own fucking technology. Well, not really, because um, I'd probably be dead by then anyway. I'd probably like have a plane crash or something. 
But you're just a you're, you're just a, a a steaming cauldron of optimism, aren't you? Oh, I love it. It's great. But no, <laughs> I um no, I would I would totally do that if I couldn't use it for myself. Like if I could use it for something myself and make something cool. And then keep it myself and maybe start up like a company or something like that. Then, yeah, I'd probably keep it for myself and probably just make more money and make myself more successful with it. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it also depends on your 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 idea of success. Like, yeah. you know, giving people the ability to stress <coughs> less in their daily lives is, is an idea of success. Um, to me, giving the military any sort of technology in, 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 uh, in exchange for profits, I honestly think is not really successful, but that's just me. Um, yeah. I just don't like war. I don't like war at all. It's, it's like, it's stupid. It's wasteful. Um, it is because like, you know, each, you know, saying each miss was like millions of dollars of money and hard work putting into inventing this technology and whatnot for it to just be last two seconds and then kill. Yeah, I know. Like that's the thing too, is that like, yeah, we spent the last 20 years developing this technology so we can make a microchip version of it. So that way we can put it inside of a missile and bomb someone with it. Oh, fucking brilliant. I love it. Yeah. Um, you know, the amount of money that's gone into war, Oh, I mean, it's send America I'm, into debt. <laughs> we can say that much. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know how America would do with a full-scale world war. It would be okay because it's not necessarily about um, outrunning the bear. It's just outrunning the slowest person in that yeah. regard. And America has America ha- does have a a, a military supremacy. It's not Rob, the re- it's not the military that I'm thinking of. It's the resources. It's the money. It's the um the people. Because I have a funny feeling if America was to go full out world war, they're going to struggle really hard to get resources to their people. Um, mm. because at the moment America's um they're they're in the same situation we are, where the cost of living is really high and whatnot. And I just have a funny feeling. Um, this world food shortage and all that sort of stuff. I just think they're going to struggle really hard because um, America imports a lot of its goods as well as um, obviously farm it themselves. Um, but yeah, I I could just see that um, it it would be hard on them. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, I know we won't survive I- at all. Well, I mean, it depends on what the scale is, because you're probably you're probably thinking of atomic holocausts, really. No, I, um, I don't think I don't think anyone's going to be nuking anyone. It's just not <sighs> the whole idea of nukes is the fear of nukes, but not necessarily to use them. Because, oh, like, yeah, n- just why would you like un- unless you're like Russia and wins. you have a suicide bomb where just everyone dies. Um, there's no real reason why you would do it because, because yeah, the, the, whatever you bomb, the land is going to be useless for what, hundred years, hundred thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, not a hundred thousand, uh, um, with today's technology and whatnot, we could probably clean up the land pretty quickly. Uh, if it was one bomb, um, if it was like yeah. the world's arsenal is a different fucking story, but um yeah um, but yeah uh, it's just uh, we've, it's gotten, one of those... we've gotten pretty good at cleaning up nuclear disasters lately <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah i just I, what it would be it, if anything i think majority of the wars these days are just going to be more an econo- economical battle than they are actually going to be a um a battle of hardware and troops um, because I know, like, obviously, in terms of just hardware and troops, like, we'd probably survive and be able to hold our own. But in terms of, like, feeding the troops and then feeding our own people when we've got economic hardships, I just don't see Australia surviving. I reckon we'll go into a depression and we'll crash. I reckon um, that's what will happen, I think. Because it's already that, a struggle now for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a struggle for us because... Whoop, 
because of like an eco- it's an economical thing, right? But if you yeah. make some adjustments and you because we're an exporting country, like we export coal, yeah. iron, food of all types. Um, it could go the opposite, I suppose, because we export everyone wanting our resources more, so we get more money for therefore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's it, it wouldn't be difficult. It, Actually, w- it would take no, work. That's not true. What that, that wouldn't benefit us at all because all our exporting goods don't come to our pockets. Every, well, I don't know what you mean. every single exporter in our country is owned by a foreign company. Right. We don't we don't see the money. Well, we'd have to. No, we don't. <laughs> That's the problem. A lot of the companies that own our exporting facilities, they don't get taxed because um, they've got some fucking loop arounds. Basically, because they're set up in another country, they don't get taxed by us a lot of the times. The only I'm taxes sure they get. Wrong. I think I remember reading that in the Australian taxation, uh, taxation law that even if it, it specifically states that even if you are based in a different country you still have to pay taxes yeah they might do but i very much doubt they would have to pay as much tax as say for example if you or i had to do it exporting that's what i'm getting at no i i we won't see the money <laughs> us australians anyway the government will we won't <laughs> yeah that's that's my well, point. Well- We'll see it in we'll see it in two hundred and thirty six billion dollar submarines that we clearly need. Oh we're not God. we're not in need on a, of anything else. You know they cancelled the F thirty fives. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so we we're supposed to get like an extra fifteen or thirteen, something like that, F thirty fives, and they cancelled it. They cancelled the order. They cancelled on us, or we cancelled. We cancelled on them. And right. I, think, I think it's because of the submarines. Yeah, like, right. How much more I mean, beneficial would fly. how much more beneficial would be to have planes versus submarines? I think planes. Mm, we have, they, have they both have their they both have their places in warfare. Yeah, but submarines just aren't as useful. I mean, that's because you don't you don't see them, which is kind of the point. No, it's because we already have them. <laughs> that's the thing. The only benefit between a nuclear submarine and a diesel submarine, which is what we currently use is a nuclear submarine can stay underwater a lot longer. However, mm-hmm. a diesel submarine has a lot better stealth, stealth capabilities and can sneak under enemy in behind enemy lines where a nuclear cannot because you cannot turn off a nuclear reactor. So they always give off a signal so you can hear them. And people that are really, right. really fucking good uh, on the old ears can hear them really well. Um, so... That's why, like, whenever we um, do those games with the Americans, our submarines always outcompete their nuclear submarines. Always. We always beat them. The only time they'll win is if, for example, we have to go to the surface. But even then, like, because when, because the way it works is, so the reason why diesel submarines have to go to the surface more often is because they use diesel generators to power the electric batteries. So, yeah. They run the diesel generators at the surface of the water. Um, so they go up to the surface of the water. They turn on the diesel generators, let out all the exhaust, suck all the fresh air and charge up the batteries. And then they go under and they can turn off their motors and they can turn everything down and shut down and go silent mode where no one can hear or see them. Um, where nuclear um because it's a nuclear reactor that charges the batteries because it's all everything's electric um a nuclear reactor heats up the water which spins turbines it's the exact yeah. same as like any other, a, yeah electricity an alternating yeah. Current? it probably makes an alternating current yeah it's the exact same oh, it's the exact same no, scenario it would be a lot more beneficial for batteries so yeah you, you, it's there's little there's not much difference you just take the magnet date Say for example, you get like two two sets two pairs of magnets. You take 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 the second pair and reverse their polarity, and yeah. that'll do AC for you. But um, but anyway, so that's why nuclear has an advantage over that. Um, but the problem be a- is you can't turn off um you can't turn it off because it's it's a nuclear reactor, so it's always well, making can- noise. 
one you can always use the uh the the nuclear submarines as sort of like a, 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 a what shall we say like a planner or whatnot or like a not necessarily a scout you can use the diesels as a scouting uh submarine and yeah. then you get your nuclear it, it's just one of those don't put all your eggs in one basket type of situation i'm guessing yeah but we have um, already got like naval ships and subs that complement one each other i mean our naval fleet has always been really strong and supportive, mm. but this whole nuclear submarine project is not. It was forced upon us by the Americans, I believe. I think that's. The I'm pretty sure you're right on that, actually. I think but. that it wasn't because we had a choice. <laughs> I think that originally the original question was, "We want you to buy our subs." It was, "We don't need them. We've just bought a whole heap of, we've just built a whole heap of brand new state of the art subs, and they are state of the art." Um, yeah. We don't need them, and they're like, "Well, you're buying them," <laughs> and I think that's how that conversation went. Because, um, yeah, it didn't surprise me. Because I remember, because I remember Scott Morrison. There was a whole thing with Scott Morrison. Um, basically, uh, can he he he. he he cancelled the. We were originally meant to get them from France, but Scott Morrison cancelled them and went I'm to America. I'm glad he did that, though. France, um, fuck France. Yeah, well, he didn't even call Macron up to let him know, so Macron just found out. Like, I, through um, somebody else. I, that, that, so that I'm Morrison gonna, I'm gonna tell you some little history on that one, actually, because I actually know someone who I knew someone briefly, um, whose yeah. partner is works for Lockheed. And um, he is the chief, he's the safety engineer for the submarine and naval ships programs, although he's right. naval ships programs. So he was going, offered the job to go to France yeah, and work over there. And a lot of their friends that were in the same industry, this is here in Australia, by the way. Um, yeah. And they all went over there for the project to set up, to get ready for the sink. Government pulled the contract. Oh, fuck. The French people were like throwing shit at the people for our, our citizens. <sighs> like throwing tomatoes and shit at them. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, holy they were shit. being such big fucking babies about it. And they were like pissed off about it. And you know what? Fuck them. Fuck the French. I'm glad they're not building our subs because I wouldn't trust them to build anything. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> there would be shit. It'd be, it's, it would be the shittest sub ever built. Probably fucking fall apart in the first docking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't stand fucking French. <laughs> I, I just don't like their country. I don't know why everyone loves it so much. The country land's beautiful, I'd imagine. And I, um, I, just, I just don't like them. I don't, I don't think I know anyone who likes France. I don't like them at all. I've met a lot of like lovely individual French people and like an individual perspective. Like if you meet me and I meet you, I'll talk to you, whatever. But the country mm. itself is f fucked. <laughs> like, I don't like it. I don't like how dirty and filthy it is. I, <laughs> I, I don't like the way they treat their, um, the countries they own, like, uh, the Pacific islands. Uh, I don't like their attitudes in life. I just do not like it at all i just can't stand i don't know what the big thing is with them i don't know why everyone like romanticizes about the french i just don't get it they're just it's a weird place <laughs> i get it but um yeah so many better places to visit in europe than france unless you visit the countryside the countryside is very beautiful but the uh paris itself is a shit hole never been <laughs> i'm not interested I'm really not interested in going. Like, I know heaps of people have been there. Um, they, they, some like it, a lot didn't. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. And I obviously have seen lots of vlogs and stuff like that. I've just got no interest in going there ever. Yeah. Um, what countries do you want to go to? I want to go to, um, I really like to visit. Obviously, Japan's on my number one bucket list. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to go to uh, uh, Germany. I'd love to go to 
um, England and visit like, you know, the, um, I know England's a dive, but I, I really want to see like the museum, the, the, um, the big museum with all the Egyptian exhibitions and the dinosaurs and stuff like that. I've always wanted to go there because it's just one of my bucket lists. Um, I've always wanted to go to Ireland and visit, you know, my home, my, my, my dad's side sort of family sort of, um, lineage. I want to go to Scotland. Uh, I'd love to go to Vietnam. Uh, I would, wouldn't mind going to the Mediterranean, seeing like, uh, Italy, uh, Greece and all that, but, um, it's not really up there on my high end bucket list. Mm. Um, apparently they've turned the fucking Colosseum into a, a, um, a market, which is a bit weird, like a shopping center. Yeah. Um, cause there's a guy that I know that's, that was, ju- oh, he's back now. Um, that was over there and he was saying that I said, how was the Coliseum? He's like, they've turned into a, a shopping center. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 Sounds a bit weird. I don't know. I asked for photos, <laughs> I wonder if they had like a market there on the day or something like that. I don't know. It's weird. Um, uh, I'd love to go to Antarctica and I'd love to visit some parts of America. Canada's definitely on my bucket list. Alaska, um, some parts of South America, uh, like where the Mayans are and stuff like that. I'd love to see the old wreckages i'd love to go to egypt but egypt's still one of those places where i'm a little bit unsure at the moment because it's been a bit unsafe there for quite some time um it's really gone downhill really actually <coughs> I would, if i was to go to egypt i'd probably want to go with one of those like scenic tour programs where you have like a guided tour during the time and that's probably the best bet because it's the safest um, cause you gotta be careful in Egypt because there's a lot of laws on cameras and stuff like you can't record there. All right. Yeah. You gotta be careful. Um, they can confiscate your cameras and stuff. Um, it's because it's, uh, it's, it's all run by the brethren, which are like, uh, which are like a, um, a Muslim fucking e-cult group of the brotherhood. I don't fucking know what they're called, but anyway, um, some parts like of Africa to, I'd like to go to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to go see, like, the safaris and stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool. The one place I have no interest in visiting and you wouldn't even... if Even if you offered to pay me to go, I won't go to India. I'll never go to India. <laughs> I have no interest in going to India. I, I just don't see any value of going there whatsoever. Right. Um, I just not interested it's just that it's that simple really <laughs> um Fair that enough. and bali i don't think i would ever go to bali no i'm not i've never been interested in bali i've never understood the hype of bali no, i think the only that. reason that anyone just says they want to go is cheap booze is like well yeah just don't drink some nah, it's just not, be pretty I'm just cheap. not interested in bali at all really mm. um uh, I think the new the I think there are only two places I'd actually like to visit, and that would be Japan and Germany. And after yeah. that, I think I'm done. Yeah, Germany. I've got no real interest. In, I've got no interest in really going anywhere else. There is a brewery, yeah. in um in Germany that in twenty in twenty forty it will be a thousand years old. Wow, that's pretty old. It's the world's oldest brewery. It's been burnt down five times jesus christ um and it's still rebuilt. going strong that's sick oh yeah, fuck yeah. i love that they make like some of, the, some of the best beer i reckon yeah it's really nice beer. i can't remember what it's called it's, it's a very german name and i cannot remember it off the top of my head yeah that's sick i'd love to do that mm. um oh, what else is there <laughs> I've drawn a blank. Um, um, so I was just, I just, I, th- I thought came to my mind that I had to message Ray about something. Yeah, because I forgot. <laughs> To rem- oh, I forgot about something and I'm just reminding her as well. So then that way. Right. Um, 
in case she's forgotten to, which I have a feeling she did. Because uh, we oh, had a lot of fun last night, didn't we? Will Spliffy tried his first rounds of Outlast Trials. That was actually quite a bit of fun. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. And Spliffy bet me by a lot by not dying. No, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, not, it's not terribly difficult to not die. It's not like Phasmophobia or Demonologist where yeah. it's a one-hit die type of system. It is. But the thing is, the times that I died was because I was just going into game and had no idea what to expect. Yeah. Um, and then Ray couldn't help me. That was the thing. Ray couldn't help me. So I, I could help you because I had um, abilities to, like, stun the enemies. So mm -hmm. I could, like, stun them, run in and get you up and then we could get out of there. Versus um, when Ray had it, she had no abilities and I was being beaten up by the giant, tall, naked man. His, <laughs> his dick was flying in my face a lot. Uh Oh, shit. I just got to quickly take care of some for like 10 seconds. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. I will talk about some things to the audience about stuff. Okay. I have always wanted to build one of these cars. Um, I've always wanted to build... One of these bad boys. I think that'd be a lot of fun to build one of those. I don't know about an electric dune buggy. I think that's a bit sort of shit. But um, it'd be it'd be a lot of fun to build these. I reckon. They're just a really cool little buggy. I like them. There was one that I came across uh, when I was doing some research down at uh, Bonbon Station, which is a giant station. Um, this is it here. Uh, it's a giant station in the middle of nowhere. And um, they had a doom buggy in one of their um, sheds that they have there. That is a Dunnart, by the way. I can't tell if it's a flat tail Dunnart, but it's a Dunnart. Look how cute he is. Um, this is what I did when I was up there. I was doing these pitfall traps and doing um, animal surveying. It used to be a, um, you can see how the sort of climate it is. I don't know who the hell these people are. Um, yeah, you essentially, you know, this is a good example. You capture the creatures in the pitfalls and then you write all the measurements and stuff like that in the paperwork. And, are you talking uh, about animals again? Yeah, I was talking about doing buggies and then it brought me to Bonbon Station. I want to see if the building that I stayed in. You need to dox yourself. <laughs> no. No, I'm not doxing myself. Yeah, that's where I stayed in. I stayed in that building there. And out the brown oh, yeah. out, out the front of the house here, I was walking mm. through there. Is it this one? No, no, sorry. This is where the um that building there's where he stayed in. Sorry, that one there, and out the front is courtyard, just like this. There's like a little fenced off here at the front, and um, I was running out the front. Um, it's a beard dragon, and uh, I was running out the front, and um, and I almost stepped on a, a bandy bandy brown, a bandy 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 snake. I don't fucking know. Well, it's a snake. You should probably not. Snake, you yeah. probably shouldn't um, step on those. No, I didn't want to. Ended up um, getting a guy that was our supervisor there. He ended up picking it up and showing us it. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, he handles snakes and whatnot. It's really sad what happened to him. So he was, like, out there when my uni mates were out there researching and whatnot. He didn't even find out, but his house burnt down. Oh, and he has a lot of uh, reptiles, like he has venomous as well as non-venomous, and he has um, a lot of endangered species that he has permits for. Like he had a pygmy blue tongue lizard, yeah, um, which is a critically endangered species, only found in one location in South Australia. And um, this snake, he called it, uh, this snake, this lizard, he called it snake bite because um, Harry came across it was um because it was a rescue he um was watching it 
um, at its hole and a brown snake came along and fucking went it. Yeah. And grabbed all to this pink and blue tongue. And so he went in to save it because pink and blue tongues, they're so critically endangered. There's not many of them at all. So like each life is very valuable. Um, so he dived down, grabbed the snake, uh, pulled the lizard out of the snake's mouth, um, and then let the snake go. And then he took the, uh, lizard home as a rescue to, um, treat it for the, the venom. Fortunately, didn't have to worry about that because apparently they have a, um, a resistance to snake venom anyway, which is kind of handy mm. for them. Um, you know, being bitten by the. I think brown snake's the second world's most venomous snake in the world, but anyway, um, of it is. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, he ended up keeping it, um, getting permits and special permissions and stuff like that to look after it for educational purposes. I think I'm not too sure on that one, but anyway, he uh, yeah, it was his pygmy blue tongue, and unfortunately, the fire took its life, which is really sad. Oh, that um, sucks. Considering all the effort he went to save it, he lost a few animals. Um, but he got really upset because, you know, he found out a little while later, no one called to tell him that this happened and they had organized a snake catcher to come and like recover all these animals. And the snake catcher was parading around with his animals to the the news programs. And, um, you know, and they've just been in a fire and now they need to be taken to a vet immediately because the snake um, inha- inhalation and whatnot. And uh, so he was very upset when he found out about all that stuff. Um, so he, he he's had some animals survive, but he lost a few of them, which is really sad. And uh, and then it, you know just to, to add salt to the rune, he lived in one of those stupid fucking communities. Um, you know, like those housing communities, and you have like a housing association part of it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he lived in one of them, and they found out that he had venomous snakes and all these snakes and reptiles and stuff. And so they yeah. um, they kicked them out of his own legally owned home. What? That's, yeah. That's... yeah. No, yeah. that's not right. They kicked him out of the community. Yeah, I know. Um, Because they're like, it's a danger. He imposed dangers to us. We didn't know that there were venomous snakes there. It's like, so what? They're in enclosures. I... <sighs> From someone who loves reptiles and has a snake, people need to get the fuck over their fears. It pisses me off. I hate fear. I'm scared of a lot of things, but I would never deny anyone anything. Um, if like he's he's a researcher, he's a scientist. His job was to research reptiles. The dude was a prodigy in his undergrad year. He discovered a fucking species of um, nematode in reptiles. He's written more yeah. papers than most people did. This guy was so <laughs> smart and such a hold him in such high esteem, like so respectful, respect, respect this guy's like so much. And, you know, to be treated that way is just pretty disgusting. Um, so, you know, yeah, I learned a lot from him. Um, so yeah, I always, I always held him in high regards. He, he tolerated me. <laughs> <laughs> he tolerated you. What? Were you a bit of a, a bit of a rascal? Yeah, I was a very big rascal. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was the the guy that you know didn't come from a high economic area, and I spoke my mind, and my language had no filter. Mm. So, like, okay, you're in a room full of scientists, people that talk properly and suck each other's dicks, like. Mm-hmm. Just, Eat off each other's ego, and then you got me coming. Go, g'day, how's it fucking going? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I had a reputation and the characteristics in the ac- academic community. Um, yeah, I was, I was the odd ball. I was the odd one out. Um, I was very unique. Everyone sort of knew where I was. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I loved it though. I, I, it annoys me. I can't do anything with it, but um, I loved it. It was a good experience, at least. Uh, well, that was a good episode. I hope people enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to try and find who we're going to raid into today. Um, Lily's adventure seems interesting. Oh, my God. That's too cute. 
They're going to Lily. Who'd you find? Lily's Lily Avendura. Yeah, I think I'm going to raid into them. They just seem really fucking funny. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you um, had a really good uh, time enjoying it. It was a bit um, political in this one, but we try to avoid political as, as much as things, but we were talking about important topics and stuff like that. Um, mm. But I, I, th I think I enjoyed it. We learned a lot today. Um, I learned a lot anyway. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. But... Um, we will definitely be uh, live um, this Wednesday, uh, as long as I don't die. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have a good night and day, depending around the world. And I hope you look after yourselves. And uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, bye. See ya.